Okay, so we did talk about this in the previous video, but we have to make another video going over a Calgary Flame superstar that might be on the move. Now, at the time of recording this video, there is no trade that has been done, but this video will be uploaded in about, what is that, 20 hours from now at 12 p.m. PST, July 20th on Tuesday, so... If there is a trade between now, the time I'm recording this audio, and tomorrow when the video is uploaded, then I apologize, we'll make another video going over all that stuff, but we're going back over to Calgary and we're talking about yet another 100-point player in the National Hockey League that might be on his way out. First, it was Johnny Gaudreau the main guy of the two, and a UFA-to-be that eventually signed with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Then we had ourselves an RFA to go over as well, Matthew Kachuk, the sixth overall pick in the 2016 NHL entry draft, a noted tough guy, a noted fighter, and a noted 100-point scorer as well. Matthew Kachuk is in the news because, as an RFA for the Calgary Flames, the team actually filed for salary arbitration with the player, which is a pretty notable process because salary arbitration is a tool used in the NHL to settle contract disputes between teams and certain RFAs. Players can file for salary arbitration in addition to teams electing to take a player to arbitration as well. This is the article on SportingNews.com. Once the arbitration has been filed, a hearing date will be determined during a two-week span, but the two sides can continue to negotiate and come up with the new contract before the hearing. Both the player and the team present a salary for the upcoming season to a neutral third party, and the two sides will argue their case to the arbitrator. Now, we see players use this exercise a lot. Hey, we're going to take you, my team, to arbitration, and we can negotiate a different contract then. But with Matthew Kachuk's situation, it wasn't actually the player himself that decided to go to arbitration. It was the team. The Calgary Flames have filed for club-elected salary arbitration with Matthew Kachuk. This provides us the opportunity to continue to work with his representatives towards a contractual resolution while removing the possibility of an offer sheet. So, if a team goes out there and files arbitration, all of a sudden, during that two-week period before the arbitration, the player is not allowed to sign an offer sheet, which takes off the possibility of any other team swooping in there and getting him in a Asperi Kotkaniemi, Sebastian Ajo kind of manner, but still... What this also does is it makes things a little bit interesting heading into the next few days. And he had NHL insiders and media people going over onto the radio talking about what this could mean and why some Calgary Flames fans might be a little bit worried about everything. This is what Pat Steinberg on Sportsnet 960 in Calgary said on Twitter, the more you dive into Calgary's decision to take Matthew Kachuk to arbitration, it's clear this is a move to buy time either to sign him long-term or to make a trade. Knowing how rarely this happens with players of Kachuk's caliber, a trade seems likely. It is a tough spot for Calgary to be in. GM Brad Trelevang has said publicly the team has put a large offer on the table. But if Kachuk isn't interested in signing long-term in Calgary, the team really has no choice but to move him this summer and maximize his value. He also then had some more word from different NHL analysts here. This is what was said by Eric Francis, fellow Sportsnet reporter in Alberta on 101 ESPN in St. Louis. He said that he expects a possible Matthew Kachuk trade to be wrapped up within the next week. Oh boy, the next week? Dude, it's Tuesday as I record this video, so are you telling me by this time next week Matthew Kachuk is no longer going to be a flame and he'll be signed somewhere else? Oh man, that's what Eric Francis is going out there and saying, eh? He said it was clear to him that the two parties are parting ways. Take this as with anything with a grain of salt, but that's still one hell of a thing to say to a radio audience. And yeah, quite frankly, I would agree there. And so, with this arbitration process being initiated, it's apparent in many NHL insiders' eyes that... It's more of a means to an end here. A little bit of an extension period for Calgary to say, okay, well, he doesn't want to accept our offer. Who knows if he doesn't even want to be here? Who knows if we could just amp up all the money, give him all the money in the world, and he's still going to say no, because we just lost out on Gaudreau. We have some extra funds to spend to try to keep Matthew around. But if he just doesn't want to be here, okay, we'll file for arbitration. We'll get that two weeks. He's not eligible for an offer sheet, and then we'll try to trade him away. Here's a little bit of a continuation from that same Eric Francis radio hit on ES. PN, the Flames are looking for a young cornerstone building player, and Jordan Cairo would fit the bill of just that. And so, 
there you go. There's a name tossed into the conversation. Matthew Kachuk for Jordan Cairo and a boatload of stuff. Obviously, Matthew Kachuk going over to St. Louis is something that a lot of people would find very intriguing because his dad played for the St. Louis Blues and he kind of grew up in that area. He was born in Scottsdale, Arizona, but... You kind of get the point here, right? You see all the pictures of the Kachuk kids, the children that are there with Keith Kachuk when he was a member of the St. Louis Blues and all these other hockey teams and all that. So there is somewhat of a history here. Remember when the All-Star game was held in St. Louis and you had Brady and Matthew, or I don't know if it was Brady and Matthew, maybe it was just Matthew, I forgot. But they were going out there and celebrating with the fans because, oh, they're so happy to be home and everything. And this actually is not the first time we have even talked about Jordan Kyra being swapped around in a Matthew Kachuk trade too. You go back to, when the heck was that? Let's open my calendar app right here and search up Kairu, because we don't really make too many videos on Kairu. The only other video we have made was talking about him and Kachuk here. Oh, no, never mind. I couldn't find it. I found the why I want video instead. Kachuk and the Blues. Here we go. The last time we talked about this was Monday, June 21st, 2021. So that was over a year ago. We made this video. I might just reuse the same PNG files to make the thumbnail because, yeah, those are some pretty good ones right there. But but Jordan Kairou and Matthew Kachuk was a crazy idea back then because Matthew Kachuk just seemed like an unmovable player. Back when we made this video, he didn't score 100 points at the NHL level yet. This season, he had 42 goals, 62 assists for 104 total points in 82 games, and he was a point per game in the playoffs as well. Now, no disrespect to Jordan Kyrou. The guy's a very good hockey player, good young piece, and as Eric Francis said, he is kind of in that mold of a player that the Calgary Flames, or any team for that matter, could really build towards in the future. He's 24 years old, drafted back in 2016 as well, a second round guy. He was a point per game too. He had 75 points in 74 games played, but 75 points is not 100 points, man. Sorry, that's just not the same. And you had yourselves what was one of the best lines in hockey in Calgary with Gaudreau and Kachuk and Lindholm doing their thing. Jordan Kyra coming over here trying to replace what it was that Gaudreau and Kachuk brought all of a sudden makes things a lot more difficult to try to project. Now, of course, at the time of recording this audio, Calgary has not used up a lot of that money that they had saved up for Gaudreau anywhere else. Who knows if they try to sign a cadre or whatever, but right now... There is an idea floating around there that says that, hey, maybe the Kachuk news evolves into a Jordan Kairou package of a trade or something like that. Jordan Kairou and a few picks and a few prospects or whatever for Matthew Kachuk, and then he signs a cheaper deal in St. Louis because St. Louis is, you know, more emotionally compelling to him as a playing location. But I don't know. You can talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about these Matthew Kachuk talks and whether or not the arbitration means that he is going to get traded. We've really been seeing the trade speculation pick up, so I definitely do think there's more meat to the bone here than I did a year ago when we talked about this Kairu and Kachuk thing. We also have another video to make about this Jeremy Rutherford quote from a few days ago as well, where he highlights a specific trade package that had been thrown around and that was apparently rejected. So, Calgary Flames fans, I want to feel bad for you guys, I really do, but... You know, as a Vancouver Canucks fan, firstly, I don't really know if I do feel bad for you guys, and secondly, I don't know if Calgary fans would even want me to feel bad for you guys, because it's like, oh, don't pity me, you're a Canucks fan. We're on the other side of the pond here, we're on the other side of the love-hate coin. We cannot go out there and get your sympathy there, Lego, so I don't really know if it's my place to say, hey, this sucks and I feel for you guys, but this does indeed suck. Imagine losing out on two 100-point players, one of them for nothing and the other maybe for a package that, quite frankly, will be a little bit reduced. Because let's face it, with all the trade rumors popping around about this guy, there is no way his value is absolutely tanking. All the other teams have bargaining power here. Hey, Brad Treliving, you're asking me about Matthew Kachuk? Yeah, of course you are. Because you want to trade him away, he doesn't want to sign with you. Why should we pay your price when your asset is an asset you want to move and you're desperate to move because he might end up leaving you guys for free? Or, not for free. If he does not sign with Calgary, he'll just hold out in a William Nylander-like fashion and maybe just not play for the entire season. Who really knows? But then that's even worse because it's like you're not getting any value for this player in 2022-2023 at all. But either way, talk to the comments about your thoughts about Kachuk, the trade, the situation, and all that. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.